I am going to begin by proving that these two statement forms are equivalent. Here we have if P or Q is true, then R is true. Over here we have an AND, that P implies R and Q implies R. So if you have these two being true, then this one is true. To prove this logical equivalence, we need a truth table. We have three component variables, so we're going to make three columns for P, Q, and R. For the left-hand side, I'm going to make two additional columns. I'm going to do P or Q, and I'm going to make a column for P or Q implies R. For the right-hand side, I'm going to make three columns. We're going to have P implies R, Q implies R, and P implies R, and Q implies R. So I'm not going to do any two steps at once here. We're going to do one step at a time. For the component variables, there are going to be eight different combinations of truth values for P, Q, and R. We're going to go in the standard order here, which means that P is going to have four T's followed by four F's. Q is going to go in groups of two, T, T, F, F, T, T, F, F, and R is going to alternate. This way we get all of the combinations of truth values for the three variables. The next column here is P or Q. If either P or Q has a T, we write a T. So we're going to have all trues for the top half. And then two more trues and two falses. Now this statement form is if P or Q is true, then R is true. What we don't like, we don't want to see a T in the P or Q column and then an F in the R column. So here we're going to put a false, false, and false. In three out of the eight cases, we have that either P or Q is true, but the conclusion R is false, which makes this false. The other five are going to get T's. So now we are done analyzing the left-hand side, and we're going to proceed to the right-hand side. Now we have two conditionals here. We do not want to see P with a true and R with a false. We do not want to see Q with a true and R with a false. So that's going to happen a few times here. We are going to have P true, R false a couple of times. So here we have a false and a false. All the others will be true. For this column, there are a couple of instances in which Q is true and R is false, in which case I would get a false going in there. Q is true, R is false, get a false going there. All the others get trues. Now this is an AND statement. I need a true in this column and in this column if I'm going to put a true here. That column is complete, which means my analysis of the right-hand side is complete. And you can see that these two boxed sets of truth values are completely identical. Because they are identical, the two logical statements, excuse me, the two statement forms are logically equivalent. Here's an example of a simple theorem involving integers, which I want to reframe in the language of conditionals and conditional statements. The claim is 
if n is an integer, then 3n squared plus n plus 14 is even. A very simple way to prove this is to break into cases of even integers and odd integers. If n is even, then the three terms that you're adding, 3n squared, n, and 14, they are all even, which means when you add even plus even plus even, you have an even integer. If n is an odd integer, then two of the three things that you are adding are odd, and the third one is even. Odd plus odd plus even is even, and therefore the sum must also be even. And I conclude by saying, since both cases are true, we always have that 3n squared plus n plus 14 is even. So now, what I want to do is declare that this piece right here, n is even, will be p, n is an even integer. This piece right here, n is an odd integer, will be q. And therefore, since all integers are either even or odd, this right up here has to be p or q, right? We're going to declare that this piece over here, this statement, will be r. So you can see up here how it's if p or q is true, then r has to be true. These two pieces are where we prove if p, then r, because down here is r. And down here we prove if q is true, then r is true. And here is r again. Since both cases are true, we always have r. In other words, this right here is the same as saying p implies r and q implies r. And that means that we always have that 3n squared plus n plus 14 is even. So you can see why this statement, p implies r and q implies r, is equivalent to p or q implies r, the logical equivalence of these two statement forms is really the same as something that we've been doing for a long time, which is breaking down a proof into cases.